My point is this. We have to deeply repent of our sins. Deeply. Deeply. It's really easy to just say a rote prayer. Lord, forgive me all my sins. It's real easy to just say a rote prayer. It's really easy to say, Lord, forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I'm sorry to tell you, saints, but that doesn't, that's not good enough. It's not, you don't just say, sorry, God. Oops, it's not like you just bumped into somebody in, in the grocery store. Oops, sorry, excuse me. That's not the level of repentance that we need. We need a deep level of repentance. Not because God is mad at you, because God loves you. And clean hands and a pure heart are the prerequisite to ascending the holy hill. There's nothing like being in his presence. There's nothing. There's joy unspeakable and full of glory in his presence. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. There's nothing like being in the presence of God. We can't enter into the presence, into the glory, without something changing. Even if it changes from the inside out or it changes from the outside, it doesn't matter. We will not be the same when we encounter God. So we need a deeper repentance. A deeper repentance. Not a condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. The Lord asked because I used to condemn myself for every little thing. I used to beat myself bloody for every little thing, every little thing, every little thing. Just beat myself up. And the Holy Spirit one day asked me. It wasn't like I was in some deep sin. I wasn't fornicating. I wasn't just just any little thing, any little thing. Because I was in a church that was performance-based, and they condemned you every time you didn't measure up to their standards. And it was never good enough. I was part of a church that was never good enough. You could never do enough. It was never good enough. And it was always condemning. So as a young Christian, I had this condemnation mindset, which caused me to sometimes run from God instead of running to God. And the Holy Spirit asked me, he says, do you know the difference between the Holy Spirit's conviction and, my, and, and, the, and the enemy's condemnation? Now, when God asks you a question, it's because he knows you don't know the answer. That's why he's asking. So the best thing you can do when God asks you, oh, no. <laughs> like when, when God asked Elijah, I mean, Ezekiel, rather, can these bones live? Ezekiel was like, Lord, you know. If I say no, I'm out of faith. If I say yes, I'm presumptuous. I can't win. Lord, you know. He said, do you know the difference between condemnation from the enemy and conviction from my spirit? I said, no, Lord. He said, the enemy's condemnation comes out of his hatred for you. My conviction comes out of my love for you. And when you can look through that lens... You will want to run, and you will, it will make you sorry for your sin. Truly, godly soul, true repentance. Because once you truly repent, then here comes the enemy. Wow, you know, you know, you know, and you're like, no, I know I'm clean. Amen? I know that I'm forgiven. My God has cast my sin as far as the east is from the west, and he will remember it no more. He has thrown it into the sea of forgetfulness, and it is gone. It is washed in the blood. A.W. Tozer said this, do not hurry to get it over with. Hasty repentance means shallow spiritual experience and lack of certainty in the whole life. Let godly sorrow do her healing work. Until we allow the consciousness of sin to wound us, we will never develop a fear of evil. It is our wretched habit of tolerating sin that keeps us in our half-dead condition. We need to repent for real. 